All right, so start off, I will just go to my editor, press the plus, open a new one, and I just want to open a new script, not a live script. So just do this, and then I'll save it as lecture3.m. You can save it whatever you like. In MATLAB, you can perform basic math operations, right? So basic arithmetic, we have plus, minus, divide, and multiply. So in MATLAB, plus is the standard plus sign that you would expect. Minus, the same as the dash on your keyboard. Forward slash is divide. And multiply is an asterisk or the star above your eight. So in order to perform operations, we just utilize these. So it works just like, uh, just like you'd expect. You can use parentheses and organize computation. So if I wanted one plus one and that multiplied by two plus 11, it will follow normal order of operations, right? It'll do inside the parentheses. Uh, so the order of operations is parentheses, multiply, divide, plus, minus. <clears throat> so in order to get it to perform the exact calculation you want, just phrase it like a math problem and structure it as such. So if I run this basic calculation, I can just do control enter. And I can see that shortcut by going over the run section. So if I do control enter, and if you remember from last time, CLC is clear command window. So I'll actually put that above my script. So it clears every time I want to run the code and I'll save this real quick. Save it as lecture three. And here we go. So first clear command window, you know, next line, nothing. This is just visually for me to space it out. MATLAB will just ignore this space. And then this one plus one multiplied by two plus 11. So this would be two times two, four plus 11. We should get 15, right? So drill enter run, I get 15. And it says ants equals 15. So what that's doing is if I look over here in the workspace, this is where all our variables are saved, right? So I have some variables already in here. Um, but the important one here is ants, A-N-S, short for answer, and it's set to the value 15. So where I haven't uh, used equals anything, what MATLAB automatically does is if there's a computation and you didn't set a variable equal to it, then it will just update the value of ants to be that computation. So this is equivalent to doing ants equals that. Let's talk about the order of this. So in math, let me pull this up. The way it works is you can have a equals one and one equals a, right? And with math, it can go either direction. These are equivalent, right? It's uh, interchangeable because all this is saying is that the one side equals the other side. So it doesn't matter if it's on the left, if it's on the right, it's just in equality. In programming, you have the variable equals the value. So what you're doing is you're setting, you're creating a variable or referencing one that's already made and equals means just update it with this value. So this value, it can be a computation like this. This is just one plus one multiplied by two plus 11, but it just has some value, right? We could just type in ants equals 15, and that would do the same thing. It's just that MATLAB can function as our own little calculator and form this calculation for us to save us some time. So what you cannot do in MATLAB then is say value equals variable. And the reason is like if I said 15 equals ants, 
down here in the command window, you'll say incorrect use of equals operator. Assign a value to a variable using equals and compare values using double equal. So we'll go into the compare values later, but assign values to a variable or assign a value to a variable using equal. So equal requires that you have the variable on the left and the value on the right. So it cannot override 15 is just 15. It can't make this a variable. So you need the variable on the left and the value on the right. And I just did ants because that's the one MATLAB will automatically do. But I can go through and I can just write variable. And right here, you can see if I press shift enter to rename one other instance of ants to variable. So if I press shift enter, this right here was initially ants, but it will rewrite it to variable. So it's just if you're renaming a variable that's in multiple places in a program, it just makes it a lot simpler. If you're trying to rename all of them to press shift enter and handle it that way. So now if I run this, let's go back. If I run this, now I'll have the variable in the workspace. The name is variable and the value is 15. So I was successfully able to make variable equal to 15. Now creating variables, we, we had ants and variables. So what, what, why did I choose those? Those were arbitrary choices because ants is the built in. So I just wanted to show you that variable was just a choice of a name. So I wanted something to be more relevant. So if I want, uh, let's say I'm writing a math problem and I had a equal to this calculation, then I could use a as my variable in MATLAB. And that way it's better easily, uh, better able to keep track of this value in a variable that'll be easier to reference later. So the reason I can use a, but I can't use 15 is because MATLAB variables have a few requirements. One, they start with a letter. Two, they then contain the following. Or they, they, then they can contain the following because they don't have to. You can just have a single letter. But you can have underscores, you can have letters, and you can have numbers. And in addition to this, MATLAB is a case sensitive language. This just means that if I say A equals one, and then I write capital A to call it up, unrecognized function or variable A. And that's because A is defined, but capital A is not. So case sensitive language just means the language requires that you be consistent with your upper or lower case when you're re referring to variables. So yeah, these are the rules when it comes to MATLAB variables, but the way you can uh, check your variables, make sure you're good, that it's a proper variable name is you can use a function. So there's variables equals some value. And there's functions uh, that take inputs. Oops. So outputs equals functions of inputs. So the way we word this is we say outputs equals or are a function of inputs. So just as you can say of for multiplication in math, uh, you can say function of inputs, just meaning that that uh, these are the inputs to this function. So what do the inputs to function mean? Um, whatever functions here, just like variables is here, functions is right here, and that is the name of the function we're trying to call. So in this case, the function we're going to try is is var name. And just as with variables, I don't have to give it an output. Um, right here, I can do 
this and it will just be equivalent to ants equals. So I'll do that in this case. I'll say ants, oops, ants equals or just let MATLAB do the work for me. And is var name and then open parentheses and give it the inputs. So in this case, I want to tell it to check a variable name for me. That's what this function does. So I'll give it a string or a list of characters that I can check if it's a name, if it's a valid name. So if I just tried to type in is var name and it variable, this would not work because what MATLAB will do is is var name and then it will fill in the value of variable, which is 15, into there. So if I do control C to exit that line, if I do is var name a 15, it will say ants equals logical zero. And zero means it is not a valid name. But we know variable is. So how do we actually, because if I show you again, if I go up, the previous one and then do variable again it's zero because it's just filling in the 15 there so how do i actually check variable that it's a a proper name so is var name and i'm going to use quotes to type in variable and all this does to matlab is it tells you okay i'm just trying to have it be the actual set of characters here. I, I'm not trying to replace it with 15. I want actually the word variable to go in here. See, see if that's a valid name, not 15. So when I type that in, it gives me one, which is great. That's what I'm hoping for. So uh, yeah, you can use is of our name to check the validity of a particular name that you're not sure if it's a valid variable name. So starts with a letter. So let's say S and then can contain the following underscores, letters, and numbers. So I'm just going to throw in a bunch of underscores, letters, and numbers. And let's see. Yep. So it gave us one is our name. That is a valid variable name. So I could make something this variable name that just would be a waste because I mean, that. what is that supposed to mean? You typically want to name it something valuable. Like I said, if, if you're trying to solve a math problem and the symbol you're using to, to solve for is A, then you just type in A. Uh, or you can do answer problem one. You know, whatever makes sense. There's various ways you have of typing that are standard within programming. So... One type is using underscores and so like problem one solution equals. Another is problem one solution. So just using caps to distinguish between the different words. But as long as you're consistent and using it in a way that makes sense, that's good enough for me. So let's check a variable name that isn't correct just to make sure we're understanding. So if it starts with underscore, that's not a valid variable name, right? Yep. How about starting with a number? Again, not. So once again, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It start has to start with the letter, and then it can include underscores, letters, and numbers, however you like. But uh, but for you to check yourself, you can do is var name, and then use the quotes to fill in whatever variable name you want. There's also specific keywords that MATLAB won't let you overwrite. So the way you can check that is another function and it's is keyword. And I'll write these at the bottom here is their name and is keyword. So is keyword, if I feed in a variable, it will say no. Variable is not a keyword, but there are some variable names that would meet these requirements. Start with a letter, uh, only contain underscores, letters, and numbers. For example, four is a keyword in MATLAB. So when we search is keyword, it will return one, which means it is a keyword. So if I type is var name of four, 
No, you cannot use four as of our name. So if I said four equals one plus one times two plus 11, it will say incorrect use of equals operator, assign a value to a variable using equals. So once again, this cannot be a variable name, so MATLAB freaks out. Okay, you didn't put a variable name to the left of the equals. There's a problem. Throws an error and won't run. So let's pull up another cell and let's talk about comments. Last time we talked about cells. So as a review, cells were the two percentage signs, and then this is a new cell, right? And uh, the advantage of this is that we can click run section um, or cell, whatever you want to call it, and it'll just run this one part of the code. But uh, in MATLAB, the way it works is you just go line by line and run each line. And if it's blank, it just ignores it and continues, right? But what if we want to have something in the code? So like we want to make a note, like these are all notes that I have. It's not MATLAB code. If I try and run this, it will say uh, invalid expression when calling a function, blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't, there's an error. So if I want to just make notes in the program and I don't want to actually have MATLAB run this, then I have a very useful tool for that. So the same way double percentage was a cell or a new section, the single percentage is a comment. So as you can see, it makes it green, which means it's a commented out section. So what a cell really is, is it's just a comment, but when you feed in the double percent, it just tells MATLAB it's commented out, but it's a specifically a section so that it'll allow you to more easily run your code. So if I wanted to make a bunch of notes here, I can select it and I can go right here and it will say comment and it will put percentages in front of all these. And as you can see, they're greened out. So it successfully commented them out. Um, just as you can do that, you can go through line by line and write it. You can, if you hold over here, it says control R is a comment. So you can use that. And finally, if you want to comment, that's line by line, but I just have this big section I want to comment. I don't want to have to go through line by line and comment it out. So the way that works is you do a percent and then you do a open curly braces. As you can see, everything under it is commented now. So I have to end it and I'm going to do that with a percent close curly brace. So now if I write some code here, you can see it's not greened out. So it's not a, it's not commented out. So I can successfully section out this for a comment. It's just a note to me. It's not for the computer to run it and I can keep writing code afterwards. So that's comments. So this is a single line comment. And with the curly braces, this is a multi-line comment. We talked about CLC before that erases the command window. Clear is a new thing. What clear does is it erases the workspace. So the workspace has all the variables saved in it with their values. If I type clear in right here, enter, it will erase the workspace. So that's useful if you're just trying to, like, let's say you did one problem set, you're done, you just want to clear the workspace and start another problem set, you can just use clear. And what I do is at the top of all of my lines of code, I do clear CLC. Because when I'm running this section, I don't want anything in the past to be interfering with it. I just want to start fresh. So I clear the workspace and clear the command window, and then I run it. So I also do this if I'm doing a bunch of sections. I'll do it in the sections. Although in your homework, you will not want to use clear, as that will erase the workspace. And when you 
save the homework file for me, you'll save the workspace. So if you're erasing the workspace through the homework, then that will cause errors. So just remember when you're doing the homework, do not do clear on each section if you're breaking the problems into multiple sections. Okay, so clear CLC. Um, as you can see right here, I used a comma to separate the clear and CLC. So if I want to run multiple commands, so I can do a clear and CLC here. The equivalent is clear comma CLC. That will do the exact same thing. It just lets you do it in a single line. Uh, the space here, it will work with or without a space. It will just ignore, MATLAB will ignore all the spaces here if you have a bunch. So uh, I just use a single space. It's just visually uh, more clear than without the space. So I use the space, but that's just for the human when writing or interpreting the code. So in this case, I wanted to clear the workspace, but let's say I want to save the workspace for later. For example, this is what you'll need to do for the homework. So I'll make a variable one. Let's see if I can type here. Variable one is 11. Variable, variable two is 15. I now want to save my workspace. So if I run this, control enter, it will show these variables right here. Um, if I want to save this, the way I can do it, in the command window or the workspace, right? Because they, they both run MATLAB codes, the same as each other. I can do save, and I'll give it a name for the workspace I want to save it as. So let's say I want to save it as workspace one dot mat. And now when I run this, you might notice this has popped up on the left. And if I click on it, it will say, workspace one dot mat mat file and the names are right here and the values are right here just like my workspace so i was able to save whatever was in my workspace and put it in this dot mat file so now if i clear to erase the workspace i've still got it over here right it doesn't affect the dot mat file so now i've got save workspace one dot mat now let's say i want to load that workspace one dot mat file to give those variables back i can use the function load so just like is var name was a function right save is also a function and you just just like a variable it's caps sensitive so you got to do all lowercase save and then open parenthesis and just feed it this one input with the quotes to tell it this is exactly how you want it to write it not if you did this then it would be trying to find a variable workspace one dot mat, not actually the text workspace one dot mat. So now, if I want to load that, if I copy this, I click load, and I run that, the mat file I saved, it will immediately put them back in my workspace. So also, if I had other variables, like if I uh, if I clear this. And say a equals one. So I have something in my workspace, and then I run this. It will just add to the existing workspace. So you don't have to worry about it erasing. If you already have stuff in your workspace, you don't have to worry about it doing a clear or whatever. You can just load it, and it will be, it will just update with additional stuff. But what I can actually do that may be faster is if I double click on workspace one dot mat, it will automatically execute the command load workspace1.mat. So instead of typing it in, I can just double click. And if I clear this, clear CLC, it will open it here. So it just it just does the exact same thing if I double click on it, um, saving and loading. If I double click on lecture3.m, if this were not open, then it will just open it in my editor. So that's save and load. Another thing is just as we used commas to run multiple commands, so I can say like a equals one, b equals two. That's the same as this, right? Those are equivalent. So if I run this, it just does a equals one and b equals two, just as if I did a equals one and b equals two. Just as you can use commas to separate, you can actually use semicolons to separate. But the difference is 
if I run this, you may notice it does variable 2 equals 15, and it saves and loads, but it doesn't show A. It just goes right to B. And you might notice the equals is no longer like highlighted with the little red squiggle underneath. So why is that? Well, if we go to our workspace, and I look at my variables, I still create A is 1. And the semicolon, it just hides it when I display it to the command window. So what this highlighting thing is doing is if you remember last time, right here it indicates we have warnings. And the orange marks on our sheet indicate where those errors are the, or the warnings. So the orange are warnings, so the code will run. Whereas if I just had 1 equals 1, there's an error. You can see that turns red. Parse error at equal on line 43. So that gives me an error. There's just a problem with the code. The warning means we're giving you a heads up that there may be a problem. So if I look at this first warning, what does it say? So add a semicolon after the statement to hide the output in a script. So if I put a semicolon at the end, what it does is it mutes this when I'm running the program. So if I run this, it only shows a equals one. Whereas before, if I take away this semicolon, it shows answer problem one is 15 and a equals one. So the semicolon is to make it so that you're running it. It will update the workspace and everything. It just suppresses the output, meaning it doesn't print it in the command window. So if you don't care about printing it, you're just, for example, like if you had a bunch of inputs to answer problem one, if you had like A is one, B is two, and you're using that in the answer to this problem, but you don't need to see A is one and B is two, you just want to see what answer problem one is, then you would unsuppress, take out the semicolon from answer problem one, but you could suppress A equals one and B equals two, so you don't have to see it every time you run the program. It'll just get right to answer problem one. So that's a function of the semicolon. So semicolon suppresses, whether it's on its own line or separating. And comma is just necessary if you're doing multiple lines in one. Because if I tried b equals 2 space c equals 3, it will not understand it. It, it doesn't understand automatically that I'm trying to run multiple lines here. So I can use the comma and tell it, okay, I'm trying to do multiple lines, so do this, comma, then do this. And like I said, we can just throw in a bunch of spaces. We can have no space. And when I run it, it will not give us an error. It's perfectly fine with that. So next, let's talk about, so for these functions, these are built-in functions. And to get more information about how they run, let's use some other functions. So if I type doc in the command window, it will pull up documentation in the help. So if I look at this, uh, it just gives me the general documentation for MATLAB, right? And if I pull that up again, I could do a search for isvar name. So that's the function we used before, right? If I type in isvar name, I'll say functions fx isvar name determine if input is valid variable name. So if I click on that, it will pull up the documentation for isvar name and it will tell me the syntax, meaning how do I, like where does everything fit in this? It'll be the True or false equals is var name, parenthesis, and then the input, close parenthesis. Or you can actually do is var name s. So let's see. Um, is var name problem. So that works. Unlike is var name a problem, which would look for a variable problem and try to put it in here, is var name space problem is equivalent to this. So you can use it both ways. So that's an example of where 
the documentation may come in helpfully. But a shortcut I can use is I can sp say doc space is bar name, and it will pull up right away the documentation for is bar name specifically, not the documentation, and then I have to search it. So I can go down and read more information if I don't understand exactly how is bar name is, look at some examples, see how that's working. Another thing is I can do help is bar name. And help is effectively the same thing as doc, except in, instead of pulling up the documentation in a separate window, it just pulls up some helpful information of this function, like a snippet of the of what's in the documentation right here for you to see. Just a quick bit of information on isvar name. And then you can say uh, see also, and it'll give some links to similar functions, or you can click here and it'll do the exact same thing as before and pull up the documentation. So when we look at things in the command window, we can actually change how things are formatted so that it's more useful for us. So if I do format short G, short G is a possible input to format. So just like uh, doc and help, I can do format short G, or I can do format short G. And I'll do control C because this or is just for you visually. Uh, MATLAB wouldn't understand that. So if I do format short G, whoops, up here I need the quotes. It is the same thing as space short G. So usually I do this. This is a little bit faster to type. But if I pull up the documentation for format and see what it is. So format of style and short G is the first one. But let's see some examples of others. So long format, format long. So if I do format long and I do one, it looks the same. However, if I do 1.0, it also does one. But if I do 0 0.1, it is 0 0.1. And that may not look weird, but if I do format short G and then do 0 0.1, it will just say 0 0.1. So there's 0 0.1 0, 0, 0, with all these zeros. So the way short G works is it will just cut it off all the appending zeros here whereas long will display it. So if you want to see these zeros always, then you can do a format long. If you don't, then you, you can use the short G. And right here, you can see short G cuts off this right at the fifth digit after the decimal point. Whereas if I were to do format long, and then do the same thing, it would show all the way up to here. And then it would include the two rounded. So that's an example where you may want to go back and forth. If you just want this, then you would do short G. If you want to see this, then you would do long. And the way this is affecting MATLAB isn't in the actual value. This isn't changing ants. Right, ants is minus 0 0.1232. Uh, whether I'm doing short G or long, it doesn't care. So if I pull up ants, then I do format short G, and then ants, and then I do format long, and then ants. It keeps all the information. It's just how it's showing you in the command window. So it has no effect on this actual value. Another set of common formats that you may want, if I go back to the documentation, you have long, hexadecimal, uh, we won't worry about, but there's short and long engineering notation. So engineering notation is like, if I go back to this, and just engineering format. Now, what engineering notation is like is engineers work with data, right? We, we are 
an applied science. So we will get a lot of data often and data will be messy. So it'll just like if you have a digital reading of some acceleration, for example, it may be like if you are measuring gravity, it may be 9.81063128769 and it may just keep going and going. But as engineers, we will just round this, we'll have significant figures and stuff. But the way we will format this is we'll have 9.81 and however many significant figures we're including, let's say we want that many. And then we'll do times 10 to the zero, because in this case, we already have the decimal point at the first number. But let's say you had a huge force. So it's like 193 billion newtons. Uh, the way this would work with engineering notation is you do 1.93. So the first digit, point. And then the following digits to however many significant figures you include. And then you'll do times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this would be the equivalent in engineering. So in MATLAB, the, the engineering has two formats, short. ENG and long ENG. So what does that look like? If I change to format short ENG, and you have to do the capital ENG because MATLAB's case sensitive. Format short ENG, and I do ants. You'll now change it to 123.1541E minus 3. E is equivalent to times 10. So this is times 10 to the negative 3. So this is the short engineering format. If I do format long ng, and again pull up ants, it'll just have a lot more here. Oh, I did 9. It's 1, 2, 3. But in any case, the short, short, let's draw short here, and then tall, a really tall fella. And the tall is 123.15413. It just, like short and long before, it just changes how many digits it's carrying about right here. And then again, this is times 10 to the negative 3. And then the last one that's of particular note is if you look down here, it'll show a bunch of different options for inputs, short, long, shorty, long E, et cetera. And then rational is another option. So if I do format rat, rat is short for rational and if I say ants now, it will convert that number that I had, 1, 2, 3 times 10 to the negative 3, to a fraction. So that's another useful one, format rat. All right, so going forward, next thing we'll get into is matrices. So MATLAB, leave a little comment here using our newfound skills. So comment, uh, MATLAB, short for Matrix Laboratory. So effectively, MATLAB was made as a language to do matrix manipulation. Let's take a look real quick. What are matrices? So matrices are those things in like trigonometry or linear algebra that look like this. So you have matrix. It's just got a series of numbers fitting into this structure. So in a matrix, you have 
rows and columns. So the way I remember it is if you're in a movie theater, you look at the rows in order to figure out which, what, what point to turn, right? Because rows are separate on each uh, ladder rung effectively. So this is row one in MATLAB. This is row two. And in columns, I just remember the Parthenon or whatever Greek structure you like. Columns are the vertical structures holding it up, right? So columns are vertical pieces like this, and rows are the horizontal. So I look at row one, row two, goes top to bottom in counting, and columns go left to right. So this is column one, two, and three. So in MATLAB, I can create matrices just like I can in math. And the way I'm going to do this, if I wanted to recreate the same matrix, I'll just call it matrix. And the standard formatting is to do capital variables for matrices and lowercase for scalars. And scalars are what we've been working with so far. It's like just got a single value. Right, so if a equals 11 or a equals 11, that's just a single value. So it's not a matrix with multiple values within it. A scalar is just that single value. If I call my new matrix, just capital matrix, just to utilize the standard formatting, and I use brackets. Brackets are how we create a matrix. So if I do bracket, and it automatically created the close bracket because or a fancy GUI tool. So I can do one space two space three, and I can do enter four space five space six. And this will create the matrix. If I run this, I'll just do CLC at the top, run just the cell, will be the matrix one, two, three, four, five, six. And it pretty much prints it out just like it shows right here. So this was successful, I was able to recreate this matrix. And what I did was I do all the elements in the first row, then enter, do all the elements in the second row. But another way of doing this is using commas and semicolons. So you need to use a space or a comma, and you can either use an enter or a semicolon. So this and this are exactly equivalent. And you can throw in spaces here. It doesn't mess with anything, but it just doesn't do anything. So typically, let's just show if I run this, it does it perfectly fine. But typically what I do, just for visual understanding, this is the easiest for me to understand, so I format it like that. But you're welcome to choose either way. They both do exactly the same thing. It will show up the variable exactly the same way in the workspace. It will not care at all. And just as before, we can suppress it if we no longer want to see the output with a semicolon. OK, so uh, and just a note, you can't put anything here, right? This is a continuation of the matrix. If you tried to do A equals 1 in between, it would totally mess this up because it's trying to go 1, 2, 3, and then continue it with the enter 4, 5, 6. And it will automatically tab it in like that. So you don't have to do that work. OK, so that's a matrix. And that's how you can create a basic matrix. There are a few other ways we can create matrices. So one tool is zeros. And this is a function that takes in either one or two inputs. So I can give it one input. And if I run this, it will just create a scalar of zero. And the reason for this is the one is telling it how many rows and columns to have. So even scalars in MATLAB, because it's the matrix laboratory, it's made for matrices. Scalars are stored as matrices. They're just stored as a one by one. So if I want a one by one of zeros, this is zeros of one is exactly equivalent to zero or zero. Right? Those are all the exact same thing. 
But if I wanted zeros with four rows and four columns, I could do this. So I successfully created a matrix, four rows, four columns. Uh, if I want three rows and four columns, I just feed in rows and then columns. And the inputs to a function are separated by a comma. I mean, you can throw in spaces or not, that level, ignore them. But if I run that, it will have three rows and four columns. So the way I remember this is our C. If you have played with remote control cars or drones or anything, RC is a familiar term, but RC for rows, then columns. So do I remember that it's rows and then columns is RC. Uh, you could also pull up the documentation for zeros. And Here we can see x equals zeros of n returns a n by n matrix of zeros. So it's zeros with the same number of rows and columns, whereas x equals zeros of sz1, sz2, all the way to scn returns an sz1 by dot, 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 to scn array of zeros. So we'll go more into that in the future, but basically it just lets you throw in that many rows, comma, that many columns, and create that size of a matrix of all zeros. So that's a tool to create matrices. What if we wanted ones? We want the matrix to all be ones, and we want the same size. Or let's make it five rows, two columns this time. So now it's got five rows, two columns, and it's all ones. OK, what about twos? twos of let's say same size five and two well when i run this it says undefined function twos for input arguments of type double so basically what it's saying is this is not a function like ones is ones is a function within matlab that will automatically create the ones twos is not a function within matlab so we can go up here comment that so how would we create a twos effectively. Um, well, what we could do is we could multiply two by a ones of the same size. And MATLAB will be perfectly fine with this. If I multiply two by these ones, it will make a twos matrix. That's the reason there isn't a twos matrix, threes matrix, fours matrix. It will create, it, uh, that isn't necessary because you can create it with a multiplication with ones. So that's as easy as they didn't want to have to write thousands of five, two. They just want 1,000 times ones of five, two. Another way or another tool is if you want to create a random matrix, and let's say you want to have random numbers zero to one of size four rows, two columns. Rand will do exactly that. And I'm in format rat, so I'll just change back to format short. Run this again. So you can see it's 0 0.1622, 0 0.79, 0 0.311, 0 0.528, and so on. So if I run this, it will create a different matrix each time, but it will always be between zero and one. And so an exercise here is, let's say we want to create a matrix and we want it to be random numbers going from, from uh, let's say, 10 to 15. Well, the way we can do this is we can say start is 10. I'll create a variable here so I can reference it later. Start is 10, span is 5. And the way I'm going to do this is I can do rand of 4, 2 multiplied by 5. 
plus 10. And if I run this, you'll see it goes between 10 and 15 because I increased it from 0 to 1 to 0 to 5 with this part. I just say this is, goes from 0 to 1. So now 0 to 1 goes from 0 times 5 is 0 and 1 times 5 is 5. So 0 to 1 to 0 to 5 in this part. And now it goes from 10 to 15 because I add 10 to each one there. All right, so that's a little exercise to create random numbers from 10 to 15. Now, a few other good tools to create matrices. Uh, one is LinSpace. So this is a function where if you pull it up, you'll see it takes three inputs here, x1, x2, and n. So x1 is the start of my lint space. x2 is the end of my lint space. And if I just run this, it will go, uh, let me scroll up here to ants. It will create a matrix and it'll be 0, 0 0.101, 0 0.202, going all the way to 10. And what this is doing is it creates a matrix. You can see there are 100 columns uh, going from 0 to 10 in even increments. So each step here is 0 0.101, right? It goes 0 to 0.101, then 0 0.101 to 0 0.202, which is, of course, 0 0.101 times 2. And then 0 0.101 times 3, times 4, times 5, and so on. And not exactly equal to 101, because you can see it rounds up here. So if I do format long, can I pull it up again? It's really 0 0.101010101. So that would be an example where formatting could come in handy. But so if I do 0, 10, it does evenly spaced numbers from 0 to 10 with 100 total. Now, if I were to give it 10 as another input, so this, this function can handle multiple numbers of inputs. It can handle 2, you know, because we ran that. It can also handle 3. And what this will do is it will make it only span a distance of 4. So it goes from 0 to 10 in even increments, but I only want four of them. So if I were to do 0 to 10, 10, it will have 10 columns. And it'll just go in increments of 10 minus 0, the end minus the start, divided by the number of steps, which would be one less than the total number of parts, because this one is doesn't count because we do the first step, second step, third step. So the number of steps is one less than the number of columns. So we do this end minus the start divided by the number of steps. And this is 1.1111. And as you can see, that is indeed the step. So Linspace automatically just calculates this 1.1111. And it creates a matrix with those evenly spaced 0 to 10 with that many columns. So if we were to want to do this ourselves, we actually have another tool to do that. So with this tool, we can do 0 colon uh, 1 point. I'll just do ants to call this and colon 10. So what this will do is this is 1.111, 1 right? And if I look at 0 colon ants, so it's 0 colon 1.1 colon 10, it's saying go from 0 to 10 with a step of 1.1. So if I run this, it will do the same thing. So if I type in 1 here and run it, it will just go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10. So just go up in steps of one. If I tip in three, it'll go up in steps of two. So stop at or before this point, the 10, the end point.
Next, there's log space. The log space is similar to lin space, but lin space is linear, right? It always moves up in constant increments. Log space moves up in logarithmic increments. So if I do log space zero, uh, well, let's see in a comparison versus lin space. So if I do lin space zero, I'm gonna follow four and I do five. And if I feed in the same thing to log space, the question is what it will give me. So what it gives me is with lint space, it starts at zero and goes to four. Uh, and because there's five, that's even. So I picked, I picked five because if I had done a different number, it wouldn't have been a step of one, right? So I chose five, so it'd be step of one. Now the log space, what it does is it does, it basically does the equivalent of this lin space, but it does 10 to the power of whatever this is. So 10 to the power of zero is one. 10 to the power of one is 10. 10 to the power of two, 100. 10 to the power of three, 1,000. 10 to the power of four, 10,000. This is just another tool of creating a matrix. And it does effectively 10 to the power of whatever this lin space would calculate. So just as we were able to do computation, like 11 minus 2 multiplied by 3 plus 6, I'm going to type here, this will return, uh, this will return whatever it would on our calculator, right? 33. And I'll do a clear cell C again. And run that. 33. So just as we were able to use these operations with scalars or single values, we can do them with matrices. But with matrices, there are a few more options. And even with this, there's there's one more option really to go over. This is called a caret. It's above the six. Its function in MATLAB is an exponent. So if I were to do 10, 3, Run this, it'll be a thousand, right? Because it's 10 to the power of three. So these are the arithmetic operations, right? And I'll include divide, and I'll include, let's see, plus, minus, multiply, divide, parentheses, exponent. So with matrices, with arithmetic, we have plus, minus, multiply, divide, power, and parentheses. With matrices, we have plus, minus, multiply, divide, exponent, parentheses, and we also have dot multiply and dot divide. And we also have dot exponent. So what do these dots mean exactly? Well, dot, let's separ separate them out. So dots go with the plus and subtract and the rest, and also with the uh, parentheses, and then the rest, the multiply, divide, and caret or power, exponent, go separately. So these ones just work how you might expect. So if I go back to my notes, let's say I have two matrices, one, two, three, four, and I want to add it to uh, 7, 11, 6, 12. So if I add these two matrices, it will combine into a single matrix of the same size, right? And it'll just add the thing in one position to the exact same position. So it'll be 1 plus 7, and then 2 plus 11, and then 3 plus 6, and 4 plus 12. And this is... 8, 13, 9, 
and 16. So if I were to put these matrices, let me just comment out this whole thing with a multi-line comment. And what I can do is, and then say A, let's use the capital notation for matrices. One, two, three, four, and commas to separate the columns, go through all the row, and then go to the next row with a semicolon. And B is seven, 11, six, 12. If I do A plus B, it's just as we expect, eight, 13, nine, 16. So that's great. That works perfectly. And just as you can add, you can subtract, you can subtract, multiply, divide, do an exponent, do parentheses, anything like that. And I can just swap this out. So the multiply is dot multiply, and that will just be one times seven plus two times 11, or one times seven in the first place, two times 11 in the next place, three times six in the next place, and four times 12 in the next space. So you can form those operations just as you might expect. But if we do a single asterisk without the dot, this is matrix multiplication. So the way you do matrix multiplication is instead of adding directly across, we will perform matrix multiplication, which you'll see in linear algebra if you haven't seen already. But I'll just walk you through it real quick. Uh, the way you do it is you look at the first row and multiply that by the first column. So that gives you the first element because it gives you the row in the first one and the column in the second one. The first position multiplied by the first position. One divided by seven plus, and then the second multiplied by the second, two multiplied by six. And then you move to the first row, second column. So this is, that means we're right here, right? We're, uh, this was first row, first column. Then we move to first row, second column. So right here, first row, second column is one times 11 plus two times 12. There we go, that's good. And now we're done with the first row because we've gone through all the columns. And we move to the second row and then multiply that by the first column. So second row, first column right here is three times seven plus four times six. And then we've done that column, so we move to the next. First or second row, second column. So second row, second column, second row, first column, and first row, first column. And uh, the second row, second column is three times 11 plus four times 12. So there are many different reasons you'd want to do matrix or multiplication, but but this is how you do it in MATLAB. So if I were to run this, I'll get 19, 35, 45, and 81. Now I'll go through and calculate all these, but one times seven plus is seven plus uh, six times two is 12. Seven plus 12 is 19. So we're good. We, if we went through and calculated each of these, they would match this. So that's how you do matrix multiplication, and you can do matrix division with the divide. Matrix division is more complicated. I won't go into it uh, and how to solve it. You'll learn it in linear algebra, and you'll learn some applications for it. But that's that. And you can also do exponent, which if we try right here, it'll say error using the caret. Uh, incorrect dimensions for raising a matrix to a power. Check that the matrix is square and the power is a scalar. So 
In this case, this doesn't work exactly like the multiply and divide. The exponent needs to be a single value, so I'd have to do it to something like 3, and then I would be able to use this. So you may have noticed these all require the same size of matrix of matrix because if this were a different size for example one two three four five six and the same seven eleven six twelve if i were to add these how do what do we do with these we wouldn't know right so matlab doesn't know either so when you're adding subtracting dot uh, dot multiply, dot divide, dot power, you have to have matrices of the same size. But in matrix multiplication and division, it works slightly differently. So the way matrix multiplication works is if you have a matrix right here, and the first one is a 2 by by two and using R C we were calling it two rows and two columns. They're both two in this case, but we'll order it this way. Row column. And then the second one is row column, two rows, two columns. The way you figure out if they can be multiplied is if they have the same dimension here. If the columns in the first match the rows in the second. So that sort of makes sense because if you look at how we did it, we looked at the first row, went through all the columns, and then multiplied it by each, the for this column, each row respectively. So you have to match one, two with one, two. Uh, and then the size of the matrix output, in this case, because they're both two by two, we get two by two out, but you can get different sizes and the size out will be number of rows in the first by the number of columns in the second. So you can figure out if you can multiply matrices and what size you will get out with that. All right, so going forward, let's look. So now let's try what would happen if I tried to make a matrix size one, two, three, four, five, I just left this space blank. Well, the way it will handle that, I'll call this matrix new, and say one, two, three, I'll separate it by commas, semicolon, four, comma, five. If I do this, it will say error using vertcat. Dimensions of arrays being concatenated are not consistent. So all this is saying is that when you're creating matrices in MATLAB, they have to to be actually sized properly. So you have to have a consistent number of rows in each column and a consistent number of columns in each row. So you can't you can't try and have empty spots like this. I'll just make this matrix you can actually have. So now let's see some information about looking into these matrices. So if I look at the matrix new, Let's just run it real quick. Okay. If I look at this, I get one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's say I want the, uh, I want to get this value out of it, the five. Well, the way you can do that is you can call the matrix kind of like a function. So how you call the function is using the parentheses, right? You just put open parentheses, close parentheses, and then puts. Well, basically you can treat the matrix like a function and give it two inputs, but the inputs to this are the row and column you're caring about. So the five is in row two, column two. So if I wanted to pull the five out of this, just say uh, matrix new position two, two, that'll be five. Um, just as we expected, if we want four, it would be row two, column 
one. Let's swap that. Now we get four out. So that's how we can get a value out from in the matrix. You call it up sort of like a function, use the parentheses, and then give it row, comma, comma. But you can actually do, if I do matrix new position, and I call up in matrix new three. If I just give it one value, what exactly is it doing? Well, if I say three, Let's see, it gives me two. You can see right here, two. So where's two in the matrix? It's right here. So what exactly is it doing? If, if you just give it one value in here, the three, it just goes column by column downwards and it just goes left to right. So it starts, this is the first, this is the second, and this is the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So if I wanted the three using this method, I'd go one, two, three, four, five. So I'd call up the fifth, Oops, fifth, and that'll give me three. Now you can also call a range of values. Like I can do four, five, six, and I want the fourth, fifth, and sixth in this matrix new. So pulling up matrix new again. The fourth, fifth, and sixth is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it would be five, three, and six, right? This is what we expect. We can call up multiple things here. But we can use the tool from before to instead of having to do this, we can just do four colon six. And that does the same thing, but it's just simpler for us. So if we wanted all of them, we just do one colon six, and it'll just go through and tell us this is basically the order it's going in, right? If we looked at matrix new, it's one, four, two, five, three, six. And it's just going through to the first, then the second, third, fourth, fifth, six. And we could do a similar thing with matrix new for the rows and the columns. Let's say we just want to look at the first column, but we want to look at, or the first row, excuse me. And then we want to look at columns two and three. If I run this, if I look at matrix new, See, row one, columns two and three, give me two and three. Two and three, just like I expect. If I did row two, columns two to three, I'll get five and six, because I look at row two, columns two and three. And that gives me exactly what I expect. So that works out nicely. Now, a, another option you can use is if I call up matrix new and just give it colon, it will just take all of the values. So I didn't actually have to do, there's between one and six in this case, but instead of doing this, I can just do a single colon and it will transform it into all a singular row with as many columns as there are elements in matrix new. So that's a way to transform matrices. Um, another way to transform is with transpose. So if I transpose matrix new, matrix new initially had one, four as the first column. Now it has one, four as the first row. So basically it takes, if I go back to here, for the transpose, it takes row one and makes it column one. So the initial row one, two, three, that becomes column one, two, three. And the initial row two becomes column two, four, five, and six. And it just goes, the first value in the row goes to the first, second to the second, third to the third. That's what a transpose does. And you can either use the function transpose with the matrix, or you can use a tick, an apostrophe, to transpose it. It does the same exact thing. So if I run this again, it's not changing at all because tick and transpose do the exact same thing. So 
that is the way to call up elements in a matrix and to transform and manipulate it a little bit. You can also update by using a matrix. So if I pull up matrix, oops, matrix new, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say I wanted to make this equal to 11. I could say the matrix new at row one, column two is 11. And just as right here, I called up matrix new at row two, column one. I can do row one, column two, and update that value with 11. So as you can see, when I run this, matrix new becomes 1, 11, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So that's a pretty useful way to update that. All right, and the final thing we'll do is we'll look at the size of these matrices. We'll be able to look at that with a function size. So size of matrix new will give us the number of rows and columns in matrix new. So matrix new is now 1, 11, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it has two rows and three columns. So with size, we can get the number of rows and columns in it. There's also another tool, length of matrix new. And I just press escape to make it remove that auto fail. I do this again, matrix. So I can either click to make it pick that one and it just tells me what it is, or I can type in matrix new and then it wants to autofill to this. I click enter, it does that. If I press escape, it will leave it as it is. But anyway, length, this matrix new, uh, it returns three. And what this length does is it just returns the greater of the row or column size. So the main use of this is in MATLAB, a scalar is a single value, right? It's either one, which is equivalent to one, or I'll swap those around. Seems to make more sense. Uh, a vector is a single row or single column, and a matrix has multiple rows and multiple columns. Um, or this is also a matrix, but matrix can, you can't have a vector that has multiple rows and columns. You can have a matrix. So this basically is a step up. This is all encompassing of everything above it, and this is all encompassing of everything above it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight would be a matrix. So the main use of length is in vectors or arrays. And the use here is vector equals just a set of rows or columns. So with a vector, if we do size of size of a vector, one, two, three, four, it will give us one and four, but really we probably just want to know how long it is uh, because it doesn't have, it's just one in the other dimension, uh, one in the number of rows. So if I do length of one, two, three, four, it will give me four. If I do length of a column vector, oops, meaning, and I'm just pressing control S there and it's trying to save the workspace to a file, but I'm not wanting that. So if I do length of a column vector, where it just has one column, so one, two, three, four, like this. And this is a row vector. Then it will again show four. So whether it's a row vector or a column vector, it'll show four. So that's the main use of length, whereas size gives you the row and column. And the way you can use that most effectively is using an array as the output. So R comma C equals size 
of matrix. What this will do, if I run this, is it will say R is 2, C is 4, because sides will output the row in the column. So if I just do size again of matrix, it gives 2, 4. So if I give it, this is a vector, right? One row, two columns. So if I give it a vector, one row, two columns, and I give it two variables here, R comma C, it will say two and four. So it will just put R is two, because that's the first one, C is four, is the second one. So that way you can get the actual rows and columns out, uh, which later we'll see that's a very useful thing to do. All right, so play around with all of these. See if you understand the formatting, creating matrices, doing multiplication and division. And uh, yeah, we'll keep going on MATLAB next.